Hello, my name's Mel. Welcome to my world. And for those of you that are new to my channel, I help run this self-build workshop. And in that workshop, there's a load of camper vans all being worked on by various van converters. Now, this is my Mercedes Vario. That's an empty can of beer. They obviously had a good night last night. Today, I'm gonna to be moving my Vario out of the workshop into the daylight. It's gonna look amazing, I'm sure. Jasper's laughing. And the idea is to get my van prepped for the Van Life Festival. She's looking a little bit scabby, a little bit rough around the edges. And I don't wanna go and meet all my fans with my van looking in this like it is now. You can see down here, there's a little bit of rust coming through. Mind you, I did take care of this rust about five years ago. So I'm pretty pleased, it's done really well. Also, the inside is looking a little bit shabby as well. So whilst it's in the workshop, I'm gonna take care of the paintwork on the inside. And also I'm gonna give it a really good service, an oil change, a filter change, give it a fresh air filter as well so she can breathe easier. Right, first thing I need to do is give it a jet wash. But before I give it a jet wash, I better check with Jasper because he's got his back doors open. And we don't want him to get all his bedding wet, do we? So I need to check with Jasper. Let him know I'm gonna get the jet wash out before I um, make all his bed wet. <laughs> Jasper, yeah. I'm going to jet wash my van in a moment. Okay, Pete. Um, just, you've got your back doors open. I don't want to get your bed all wet. Okay, mate, no worries. I'll let you know when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unless you need them open. No, no, no. I can give you a minute. Won't take too long, mate. Yeah, I can, I can wait, I can wait. No, 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 just when you make your mate, that's fine. All right, then, I'll get it all prepped. Okay. Cheers, buddy, appreciate it. the jet wash out I'm all ready to go Jasper's hijacked the jet wash <laughs> to wash his bike look at that it looks brand new yeah. how many miles do you reckon you've done on that on my Strava it's got 110,000 kilometers <laughs> but I didn't record all of my mileage no. triggers broom yeah pretty good going He's been all around the world on that bike, literally. Right, let's get me van washed. So nice to get dragonfly out in the daylight. <laughs> Look how much light it lets in. That is amazing. I am really impressed with that. Anyway, let's get working on that sprint us. <laughs> well, I suppose I better lock this up for the very first time. Yeah, that's the point. I've not even tried the locks yet to make sure they work. It might have been a good idea to lock the back doors before I parked it in the weeds. Look at that. Right. Let's try this one. Check. It's locked. That's a good start, I suppose. Let's try this one. Check. Yep, she's locked as well. 
Uh oh, maybe this is why we've got more than one key. I'm going to have to change this. I don't like it when you have to have more than one key. Oh, there you go, that's the side door locked. Oh, the weeds aren't that bad. There we go, let's try this one. Nope. So we've got a key for the ignition, two front doors. Oh, not that one either. This one. There you go, the ignition key fits the back door. So what's the other one for then? We've got a key that does nothing. Oh well. I think we'll worry about that another day. I will be obviously fitting an alarm an alarm to Dragonfly and also some better security locks as well. Hopefully I can find which ones these are. I do like these locks on my van. If anyone knows what these type of locks are, you literally have to turn that before you can open it. Um, so yeah, if you know what those locks are, let me know in the, disc in the comments section of this video. I really appreciate it. Right, let's get my van in the workshop. It's a little bit tight under here, but there's plenty of room, plenty of room for an oil tray. I've no need to jack the van up. I can get to it easy enough. Yeah, simple. It's a little bit oily under here than it was last year. Looks like I've developed a leak in the oil return pipe from the turbo. It's not too bad. Not too severe, but we'll have to address that anyway. Now I know it's there, I'm going to have to take a look at it. But first, let's drain you all out of the sump. She goes. Yeah, gotta be quick. <laughs> yeah. Now, for those of you that are wondering, Sprinter holds 11 litres of oil. That's why it took so long to drain out. But I'm going to leave that now to let it drain out a little bit more. Whilst that drains out, I'm going to take the air filter box off take the oil filter out change all of that first and just leave that dripping out so we get every last drop of dirty oil out of the engine now to take the air box off of a sprinter it's really simple it's literally just one screw and that is the screw that holds this jubilee clip on there that is it these you push you pinch push and then pull Pinch, push, pull. This part here, just lift it up. Take off the jump lead extender. This is in case you're ever unlucky enough to get a flat battery, that's so you can jump start your van. Just tuck that away to one side. That's it. That's your air box off. Here's the oil filter here. The oil filter is underneath this plastic cover. And to remove it, the plastic cover, you'll need one of these straps. You can get a special tool um, made by a Mercedes, but this will do just as well. Now, when I get this out, the filter inside there isn't like a cart, it's a cartridge filter. It's going to be covered in oil, basically, and that oil is going to want to drip and go everywhere. So what I do, I get a doggy poo bag, place it inside where the air filter pipe once was, this makes like a little cup inside there. Can you see that? Yep. So when I take this out, I can then put it straight into that uh, doggy poo bag and it's not going to make any mess. 
And these are really cheap as well. You could save yourself a fortune by doing this yourself. It's a really simple job. I will put a link in the description of this video um, if you're interested in buying one of these. Loosen it off. Just put it that way around so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. There you go, you can see how that's working. Once we're past the O ring, it will go really loose. You don't need to do these up tight because they're sealed by an outer O ring. Um, it's not the pressure of it being tightened down on the O ring that seals it because the o-ring goes down inside the sleeve so it's, the pressure is actually outwards like that and I think it says on there 25 newton meters of pressure which is basically hand tight mm -hmm. now you'll see the air filter uh, the oil filter sorry as we pull this out there's the oil filter just going to let that drip for a minute and the oil dripping from this is going to go down to our sump out of our sump plug sump plug and into our drain tray that we've left underneath the van there we go now let's get it in there like that and all we do is pull that out of there like that And then our dirty oil filter goes in our doggy poo bag. I'll just wrap all the road grit off of this. After all, it's been here for a year. I change this every year I do this. And I've done this since I've owned the van. So let's get rid of our dirty oil filter. We don't need that anymore. We'll just bag that up. We can dispose of this responsibly. Like that. There we go. No mess. Everything's in there. It's all contained, and we can uh, get rid of this in a responsible manner. Now, a new oil filter comes in a box like this. As you can see, it's like a paper cartridge-type oil filter, and inside the box there should be. A new set of o-rings for the filter cartridge holder let's put that back in there so we'll change these o-rings first before we put the new filter on there okay let's get my special o-ring removing tool or what some people like to call a small screwdriver like that Take that one off right there. Now, like that. Moving going to put these back on in the reverse order that we took them off but don't drop them now don't drop it like that. now before we actually put this back into the engine we're going to put a little bit of grease around each o-ring so when we screw this in it's nicely lubricated and the o-rings won't pinch on anything Literally just a, a knob of uh, grease. A little bit there, a little bit there. And a little bit all the way around there like that. You don't need a lot. Now we've done that. Get her a cartridge oil filter. You can see it doesn't matter which way around this goes. It can go either, either end first. 
over our first O-ring into place. Make sure that's nice and clean in there. There we go. Lovely and shiny and clean. Now a nice new oil filter can go into place. That is it. We don't do it up tight, it's literally just hand tight. There's no need to like really wrench it up because if you do that, you'll never get it undone when it comes to changing it again next year. Right, so that's our oil filter done. Now let's do the air filter. So just like the oil filter, the air filter is a paper, paper cartridge type filter. Now you don't have to change the air filter every year. Probably every two years will do really does depend on the mileage you do and the sort of terrain you drive on. Obviously if you drive or live in a really dry, dusty place, then the air filter you're going to have to change every year. But here in the UK, it rains a considerable amount of time, so there's very little dust in the air. So this air filter is two years old. Let's take a look and see how it's fared. I've probably done about 20,000 miles, that's all. Because last year, if you remember, I spent most of the time here in the barn. The van didn't go anywhere because we were building out Becky's camper van. So I don't think I've actually been on any road trips yeah, for well over a year now. So I don't see how this thought was going to be that bad actually. Probably doesn't need changing. There you go, look. It's not really that dirty could probably leave that in there it's really not that bad at all but I bought a new one so we're going to change it anyway because this summer I do intend to go on a little road trip or two there we go, that's better just make sure that's going in the ridge yep Still. Really change these screws. These screws are terribly rusty. Yeah, it's sealed. Two screws, plenty. Now this isn't a sponsored video, but I do like to use Slick 50 whenever I change the oil in my van. It just adds that little bit of extra protection. There's a big debate whether or not this stuff's any good, but for the sake of 25 quid, I think it's well worth using it. Now I have replaced the sump plug along with a brand new copper washer as well. Just forgot to film it. <laughs> For those of you that are wondering, I have not forgotten to put the sump plug back. It is, I can assure you, it is definitely there. Or did I? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I think myself then. Right. All that's left to do now is put some engine oil in back in the engine. Now the oil I put in my sprinter is fully synthetic, 5W30. This is what Mercedes recommend. Now my van does take 11 litres and it's cheaper to buy 20 litres than it is to buy 11 litres. Don't know why that is, but it's just the way it is. Plus I'll have enough left over to do my Vario. So I do believe my Vario takes the same oil, but I do need to check that first. Now I'm not going to try and pour this directly into my engine like this, because that 
get really messy. So what I like to do is decant this into a diesel jerry can, it's five litres, and then I'll just put two of those into the engine. I know I've got 10 litres in there. And I've got a diesel jerry can that I use all the time for doing this. I've used the same jerry can for I don't know how many years. <laughs> right, let's get some of this out of this big container into a smaller, more handleable container. What I'm going to do is I'm not, I'm not actually going to put all that oil in there. I'm going to wait for that to settle and then check my dipstick to make sure I don't put too much in there. Because we don't want it right at the very top where it says maximum. So if I put it up to maximum, I know for a fact I'll get a warning light on my dashboard. So we want it somewhere in the middle of these two marks. We can always add a little bit more oil later on if we need to. But it's very difficult to take oil out. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, you can see it's just on the tip of that. So we need just a fraction more. There we go. The oil mark is dead in the middle between these two marks. I'm happy with that. Right. That's good for another year now. Let's put that back in now. Simple as that. Right, don't forget it. The amount of times I forgot to put this back in. Getting it this time. Well, now that I've changed my oil, I've changed my oil filter, my air filter, giving the engine a bit of a service, it's time to reset the service lights on my Sprinter. And to do that, I'm going to use my iCarsoft OBD car scanner, and it's also a service tool as well. You can see here it says service, so I simply select that. Oil reset, select that. Then I select my vehicle, Sprinter, really simple. Just follow the online instructions, initialising, sprinter, enter, oil change, set ignition switch to on, like so, press enter, communicating, please wait, F2, OK, remaining distance, remaining times I reset, OK, F2, Oil quantity data sheet, engine oil, blah -de blah blah is reset. <laughs> yes, we want that. Normal. Enter. Communicating, please wait. This function was successfully carried out. There you go, all the little lights on there are flashing. F2, OK. There we go. Simple as that. Now my oil um, service lights have all been reset. Let's just check, switch it off, switch it on again. Scroll through my menu, here we go. Service B due in 19,000 miles. Engine oil level measuring in progress. So there you go, it says my oil engine level is okay. Let's switch it on. Perfect. There you go. 
Now, for those of you that are interested, I will actually leave a link in the description to where I got this OBD car scanner from. It has saved me a fortune over the years that I've owned this Sprinter. I've broken down on numerous occasions, and pretty much every time, that scanner tool has got me out of trouble and got me back on the road in no time. And I haven't had to go through the pain of going to the main dealer to fix my van. So there you have it, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video, you found it mildly entertaining, slightly informative. If you did then make sure you hit that like button, give this video a thumbs up, just to let YouTube know you enjoy watching my content. And if you are new around here, please do consider subscribing and I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching, ta for now.